Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name's Bob, and in this series of videos, we'll be looking at SAP Big Data Warehousing. In this video, we'll be looking at SAP HANA Smart Data Access. Now, if we look at our architecture, what we have is four different data sources. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use Smart Data Access to connect to three of those data sources, in our example, Oracle, Hadoop, and Excel, and how we build these virtual tables. Of course, using SAP HANA Smart Data Access, you can connect to a whole wide variety of data sources. And here you can see a list of some of those different sources. So you can connect to different types of mainframe, you can connect using Camel JDBC, which can be used to connect to things like Facebook. And you can also build your own connectivity because there's an adapter SDK, which enables you to write your own adapters. In our scenario, we're a supplier of pharmaceutical products within the west coast of the USA, specifically California. Here we have some of our transactions, which are stored on an SAP ERP system that runs on an Oracle database. So here we're using the Oracle SQL developer to look at that content. And you can see in the top left hand side, we're accessing four tables. This first table is the max table, which lists our products. This second table lists our inventory. The third table lists our stores or branches. And the last table lists our sales transactions. Our second data source is contained within Hadoop, and that data is within the Hadoop Distributed File System, or HDFS for short. The data is stored in HDFS, but it's accessed using a tool called Hive. So you can access this with a command line editor. So here I've logged into my Hive, and if I run a SQL-like command, which is show databases, we can see we've got some databases. One is called EPA, and if I connect to EPA and look at the tables, you can see we've got five different data sets. This data is publicly available data from the Environmental Protection Agency. And essentially what it's showing is historical weather data for California. And this data, you can actually get 30 years of data. These files can be actually quite large. But in my example, we've only got two or three years of that weather data, which is stored in Hadoop. Now this data is split into various metrics. So for example, we've got temperature, wind, pressure, humidity, and AQI is simply the air quality index. Now, even though this data is stored in HDFS, because we're using Hive, we can run SQL-like commands on that data. So here I'm running a simple select star from the data lake, which contains temperature. And this is what that data looks like. So again, this these files can contain weather data for various weather stations all over the US for a specific period of time. As you can imagine, smart data access can connect to a wide variety of data sources. Another example of those data sources is Excel. So on, my, on a Windows server, I have an XLS file and it contains the feedback from a list of customers in the Los Angeles region on our online pharmaceutical delivery business. This file contains each of the customer's name and address. But as you can see here, we're missing some parts of the address. We're missing, for example, a zip code. And also, there's a few errors in this address which we want to clean using SAP HANA technologies. So an obvious one here is that Hollywood Boulevard is spelled incorrectly. So how do we connect to these three sources? Well, I'm going to use a tool called the SAP HANA Data Provisioning Agent Configuration Tool. So this is what that tool looks like. It runs on Windows or Linux. And what the tool enables you to do is register this agent with your HANA box. After you've done that, you can then choose one of these adapters that you want to use in order to connect. So for example, here I've registered the Excel adapter with my SAP HANA system. If I scroll up and down, you can see all the other adapters. Here you can see I've registered Hive because we're connecting to HDFS through Hive. And lastly, because we're connecting to Oracle, I'm connecting to the Oracle Log Reader adapter. 
So we can connect to simple files like CSV files or Excel files, databases or ERP systems, and we can also connect to things like Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus as another example. Once you've connected, then you can use developer tools such as the SAP HANA Studio or Eclipse to create what are called remote data sources. Of course, this can also be done in our web IDE as well. So if I drill into my connection here called BDW user and go to my catalog, we've got a schema here called BDW underscore demo. But if I expand the provisioning folder, here we can see our three different remote data sources. We have one for Excel, one for Hadoop, and one for Oracle. And of course, here you can see we're using smart data access. If I expand that connection, you can see here we're connecting to that remote system. So here we're connecting to the EPA database. And if I drill down again, these are those five data lake tables. The same applies to Oracle and also Excel. Now, ultimately, what you build within your chosen schema is a virtual table. So if I expand my schema and we expand tables, here you can see a list of those virtual tables. You'll know that they're a virtual table because they have the green icon next to the object. So here we're connecting to that temperature data lake. And if I open up that data, here you can see in HANA, we're connecting to data in HDFS through Hive and it's represented as a normal two-dimensional table. Of course, the same applies to our Oracle data. So here we've got a virtual table connecting to that MACT table in Oracle. This is what the data looks like. And again, here it looks like a normal SAP HANA table. But as you can imagine, the data doesn't reside here in HANA. We're connecting via a view to that remote data source. Lastly, if I open up the content within that spreadsheet, this is what that data looks like. Now here we're using a view, but it is also technically possible using a technology called smart data integration to do real time replication on the content in these views into a duplicate table which resides in SAP HANA. This data can be replicated on a transaction by transaction basis. And whether you can use this technology depends on the adapter that you're using. So to recap, what we've covered in this video is how we've used the SAP HANA data provisioning agent configuration tool to connect to some remote sources, one a simple file such as Excel, one a database, and also one is a Hadoop system. And then we saw how within the SAP HANA Studio, or if you're using Eclipse, you create these remote data sources, which are essentially connections via the data provisioning agent to your remote data sources, which ultimately allow you to build these virtual tables, which connect through that data provisioning agent to your remote source. If you want to find out how to install that data provisioning agent or set up the connectivity, do a search in Google for SAP HANA Academy Smart Data Access, and we have a playlist with over 45 videos on how to set it all up. Now that we've looked at SAP HANA Smart Data Access, in the next video, we're going to look at SAP HANA Spatial, which will help us deal with this location-based data source, which is that weather data.